Autoridades, señores. Authorities. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here with you because this is a lovely island. It's also an island that is wants, wishes to be a pioneer in the field of sustainability and the circular economy. I would like to thank the organization from the bottom of my heart. I think the organization so far has been perfect. The venue, last night's dinner, etc., everything. I'm going to talk to you about the general waste policy, but focusing more on a European view. I think you can say that there are four stages to this policy. The first one is to control the elimination of waste. That's, no, the second one is to diversify treatment of waste. The third one is to establish a hierarchy for managing waste. And we're now in the fourth stage, which is to close the life cycle. The question now is not just to close the life cycle. It, we also need to incorporate the previous stages, as I just heard. So why should we put an, an end to fly tipping? Obviously, it's a, health, a public health problem, and it's a pollution problem. We also have a duty, an obligation, since 1975 to control and ban fly tipping. Moreover, ever since 1999, a landfill has to meet technical requisites. These include a progressive reduction of the biodegradable factor uh, fra fraction of municipal waste. The current discussion in Brussels is whether we can go even further and really set a limit to uh, legal landfills for municipal waste. So the commission on the table has said we have to reduce tipping of municipal waste to 10% by 2013. A lot of people in the discussion say that this is not enough. What would be even better to set a standard that would totally ban landfills, direct landfill. So you wouldn't have to go to a landfill without having preliminary treated municipal waste. The second guideline, we need to bear in mind the different kinds of waste. Some waste can be recycled as material. There is other waste that can be used, that can be harnessed, the organic waste, and there's other waste that can be used as fuel. But Europe-wide, we are now saying that we need at least to organize a network, some sort of integral system for eliminating and harnessing waste. Moreover, we have, we've put figures on several of our targets for certain kinds of waste. This is for harnessing the recycled waste or just for collection. This is up to 55% for packaging waste it has to be recycled and up to 85% for used vehicles up to 50% or more, I think it's up to 75% now, for electronic waste. You also have figures set on your obligations with regard to batteries, tires, progressive reduction of organic waste in the landfills, and also a general ban concerning municipal waste, and we need to reach 
50% of recycling of all this waste and 75%, 70%, sorry, for recycling of demolition and building waste. The key problem here is the question of the 50% of recycling of, re of municipal waste because quite honestly there are four ways of you could interpret this. If 50% of the paper, glass, metal and plastic waste, or are we talking about 50% of this waste plus other kinds of household or similar waste streams, or whether we're talking about all household waste, or are we talking about 50% of all the household waste and all the other waste that is collected by the local council and managed by them. Obviously, there is no harmonization in Europe on this. So what the Commission is proposing now, first and foremost, is to bring in a common method for calculating these targets, apart from increasing slightly the 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 recycling rate or reuse for municipal waste and also to slightly increase the recycling rate and preparing for reuse of uh, packaging waste the discussion the discussion has thrown up many different complications of how to calculate municipal waste or non municipal waste a similar waste to a household waste. How is all of this calculated? At the start, do you wait, measure this at the beginning of the stream, at the end of the stream, in the treatment plant? Is this really the amount that goes into the landfill or what? There are 28 countries in Europe and each one has their own view of how to calculate this and I really don't know whether it's we're going to reach an agreement on this this year or even next. We will probably have slightly more harmonization because everybody understands that the four different interpretations cannot remain on the table. Moreover, the discussion as to why do we just have figures for uh, targets for recycling or preparing for reuse? Why don't we set numbers for prevention or the reuse of products. From this standpoint, Spain is on the cutting edge. Spain already has targets for prevention and for preparing waste for reuse or for the reuse of electric and electronic appliances. The only issue is to implement this in order to check our targets to see if we're hitting them. What we need to do now is apply this hierarchy, but this, what it really means is to, we need to reduce, prevent waste, reuse products. We all have seen this pyramid. We need the first step and the most important step has to be prevention of waste followed by preparing waste for reuse before moving towards recycling, energy recover and disposal. Uh, implementing or enforcing this hierarchy is a legal obligation since the 2008 directive. From this hierarchy we can move away from it but we need to prove that the better environmental results if waste is managed in a different fashion. I think it's important to understand that preventing waste is not a question of reducing the waste that in the end are disposed of. Prevention is taking action before waste actually appears. It's a question of not using packaging or reducing the materials used for packaging or reuse a packaging, packaging material for a second time. That 
is what I'm talking about when I talk about prevention. With regard to the directive now, the framework directive, there are three basically guidelines in pre for prevention. First of all, to implement the hierarchy strictly. It's not just a question of including prevention in legislation, but rather to implement prevention through in all policies, in all actions taken. Second, we need to have a formal waste prevention program. This can be included in the management plan or it can be a specific political act. And for preparing waste for reuse, these are the operations for controlling, cleaning, repairing. And here, we need to take positive steps. We need to act positively. We need to do something. The directive leaves things pretty well open, but at least the public authorities need to do something. The discussion at the moment is how to complete the obligations within these prevention programs with regard to strategic raw materials. I'm talking here about those sort of products that you can't find that is fairly scarce or have to be imported. A lot of materials that you find in electric and electronic appliances. If we want technology to move forward, we, then we need to recover the rare earth that is used to build these apparatus. Another aspect tackles the issue of fly tipping of waste. I think now every city, all regions of Europe, we need a plan against littering. This means that we have to establish sanctions, we have to enforce them. But above all, I think what this means is to offer economic incentives so that the people do not just throw away their, their rubbish in the countryside or into the water. We are currently in the stage of closing the life cycle. We've heard this from the former chairman, the chairman, and the mayor. And there are several reasons for changing our economic model. The first thing is that there is a limit to our resources. And we have seen that with the population growth and the living standards of most people on Earth, we are in consuming all sorts of things and we're creating more and more waste of beer, biomass, minerals, metals and fuel. All these things that create energy, we cannot continue this way. The second reason is that we need to consider the fact that raw materials cannot be found everywhere. They are very scarce. So there's a fierce competition for them between the United States, Asia, China, India, Europe. And here, Europe is highly dependent on these raw materials. We import far more raw materials than we export. And the third reason, as we've heard, is the whole issue of climate change. We need to reduce our carbon emissions, our carbon footprint. And here, this is our life cycle. We'll have to reduce, recycle, reuse, because it has enormous, enormous potential for reducing CO2 emissions or green, uh, greenhouse gas emissions in general. We can reduce this by 600 million tons or by, uh, between 2 and 4 percent of CO2 emissions by using the circular economy. The third reason is that the current economic model destroys jobs. When the GDP grows, 
it doesn't increase the number of jobs. We're seeing more and more people who are unemployed. And a change in economic model, a move towards a circular economy, presents potential for creating new jobs. I'm not going to say exact, I mean, exactly how many jobs will be created for the Canary Islands or for Spain, but we're talking about thousands and thousands of jobs. This is not the full solution to the problem, but it's certainly a contribution to, to moving out of this social and economic crisis and the environmental crisis that we are currently submerged in. In order to close the life cycle, the European Commission says, OK, I'm going to invest, a, I put a lot of money on the table. 650 million euros, for instance, that is spent on the Horizon 2020 program. On top of that, with structural funds, there's loads of money available for designing circular economy policies. This can be done regionally, nationally, or even just for a single city. The second guideline is a review of the waste directives. We have four directives that are currently under review. I'm not sure whether they can see any new things coming out of them, but clearly the, ob the recycling objectives have been confirmed. Will there be further harmonization with regards to extended producer responsibility? And there's another discourse as well. There's a program of 50 actions prepared by the European Commission that they have to roll out. The important thing for us is to apply certain principles in the issue of the circular economy. The circular economy is recycle. But it's far more than just that. The translation for companies, they say, OK, yeah, we're in favor of the circular economy because we recycle. But quite honestly, they're losing this new message because the new message is that we need to rethink everything. If we need to produce, we need to consider whether we need to produce or not. We need to think about the resources, whether res certain resources can be replaced. We need to rethink the design of the products we're using. We need to see whether several products can be given a second life or not. So this life cycle, if we roll out the circular economy, first of all, we have to accept this concept of the hierarchy. It's not just a question of, of hierarchy for acting with waste and resources, but it's the concept of regional hierarchy. It's important to understand that a short cycle is much better if we look at the transport and the whole problem of the emissions and the transport of resource from one end of the earth to the other. Reuse creates local jobs. So what we need to do is to act and, and ensure the shortest possible cycle. This means that, first of all, we can start in a neighborhood within a city and to see what we can do there with regard to the circular economy. Then we can move up to a city, to an island, to a region, an autonomous region before going nationwide, Europe-wide, or global. Obviously, for certain aspects, we do need international action, but a lot can be done at a very local level, too. The third aspect of all of this is that we need to understand that there's a key role to be played by the local and regional authorities, and this key role can be undertaken in, with many different instruments. If we look at the cities and regions, for instance, there are a lot of a information aspects can be developed with regard to the circular economy. Training, education that we've talked about here. 
We need a policy to change the design of products and we can provide support for companies working in this field. We need to organize reuse and obviously we need to promote sorting of the of waste. We need to create the structures for recycling. We also need to remember that financial incentives are required to promote the circular economy rather than against it. So if the price of a landfill or incineration is lower than the cost of recycling, then we're not promoting recycling. So one possibility is to create certain incentives vari or variable contributions or variable taxes or subsidies and this is the responsibility of cities and regions. All the public authorities are consumers, they're purchasers. So they need to use criteria that will promote circular economies and we're seeing the appearance of new business models that require promotion and finally we really need an integral strategy for promoting circular economy, at least on a regional level. I'm going through this quite fast because time is short. First of all, let's start with information. This is raising awareness. But People need to realize that this is the only planet that we've got and every product that is consumed, but behind that it has an enormous environmental impact. So we need to organize awareness campaigns with the Association of Cities and Regions for Recycling. We have promoted a European Awareness Week. We now have 20, 30,000 examples of what you can do for information, to get information across to the people, education or training. We've talked about environmental education here, and this has to be done at all levels, from primary, secondary, universities. The, for the foundation can set examples we have some reference programs in, in our manual. We need to look what's done in universities, but there are many international examples of what can be done with regard to environmental education. Eco-design. In Catalonia, every year they've organized a prize for products that show a more positive uh, eco-design. In regions such as Flanders, they've organized a repertoire of criteria that companies can use, a handbook to, to check whether their products are moving towards eco-design. Reuse is banning throwaway plastic bags, but it's also a question of organizing shops, promoting spaces for exchanging products between people and the concept includes repairing these appliances. All these actions will enhance our social relations which also spreads awareness. Sorting and recycling, selective sorting, the important thing here is that we need to understand that there are several ways of organizing selective sorting. You have the clean points, you have the containers, the container parks. In truth, in Spain, and many of these aspects are highly confusing. I've just been in Malaga for a week, for instance. And the, color, the different colors, yellow, green, blue, of the different colored containers, is not standardized, so people don't understand how you can have effective sorting if you don't have standards. You need to think whether, you're using, whether to use bags or cooled containers, reefers. We also need to promote the, the, the possibility for people to manage their own kitchen waste or garden waste by composting at home. 
and obviously we need to create infrastructures, industrial infrastructure for sorting. The best system would be one where the people pay depending on what they tip. And this way we can distinguish between the contribution made by individuals and companies. They should be pay for the collection of their, uh, their waste. We support must also be given to uh, produ producers' responsibility systems, which would include, they need to include in their systems a variable contribution depending on the eco design or the rating they get of, for their product from an ecological point of view. There are several different business models industrial ecology which is quite an old concept but what it really means is that the waste from a company can be resources for another company so when you create an industrial estate you can think well wait a minute what company would be interested in the waste of this other company on the same industrial estate but I think we need to go further than that, what's called industrial symbiosis. And this includes things about thinking about services that companies could manage in common, such as transport services or waste management services. So this way, what we need to do is to move towards an, an integrated um, factory park with common services shared by all of them. Then there's the issue of the functional economy or move towards providing more services than products because companies don't necessarily have to sell an, an electronic appliance but they can rent it out and they could, so they're providing a service and you can maybe pay depending on the number of photocopies that's been made by a, a photocopying machine and this is then you can rethink the pieces of the components of the products that they're selling and there's enormous potential in this field and what's now called the collaborative economy where consumers are increasingly organizing themselves to create transport systems accommodation etc the collaborative economy certainly will have a downside. We need to set the ground rules, but it is a new evolution that stems from technology. So it's the responsibility of the public authorities to bear in mind all these new aspects that can contribute to the circular economy. Public procurement, everybody understands that. The question now is that we need to understand that on a regional level, we have several examples. In the north of France, for instance, we have an example of a, a strategy that's been called the third industrial revolution that can set an example for preparing strategies in Flanders in Belgium, in the north of Belgium, we have this participative process which is a new kind of strategy with the, the participation of all the stakeholders in the life cycle. So you've got the producers, the consumers, the waste uh, management, the, the consumers, etc. Then on the city level, because between certain cities and certain regions, we also have examples you'll find circular economy strategies that can act as an example in London, in Scotland. There's a platform that's called the Circular Europe Network. This is a network that's connected to associations, recycling associations in cities that tries to bring together all of these examples. And the foundation that I represent also tries to organize a platform amongst regional uh, 
autonomous region, sorry, to see why and how we can develop a circular economy strategy. We are going to publish articles. We're going to organize a conference in October in Barcelona. And I hope that we will have a permanent platform for exchanging information and idea about regional strategies for circular economy. And obviously, I hope that the, Ter the Canary Islands government and the Tenerife Council will take part, take an active part. Thank you very much for your attention. Hola. Eh, Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre, we have a lot of questions. Thank you, first, for your presentation. Uh, we'll only choose one because we don't have much time. Tony Pahis from Twitter, she asks, what awareness messages can we transmit to the people because, depending on the region, there's more or less awareness. Right, every region, every city is different. But now there is a certain level of awareness. It's true. We see and hear about the environment on the TV. After COP21 in Paris, mm, we can see now that many different countries throughout the world, world are considering the environment. Mm, but there's a relationship between socioeconomic problems and the environment. Because many people see the crisis in a way that's not only restricted to the environment, but related to quality of life and, and well-being. So we are now at a moment where we need to understand that there are environmental solutions that may serve as solutions to bring in the transition from a linear approach to a circular approach. Fantastic, thank you very much.